Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dadex and we're just undocking in a heavy assault missile caracal the ham caracal have a little bit of a mooch about out here I've moved a few ships out into a new pocket we'll see more of it in the new year it is New Year's Eve right here right now so I wish you all the very very best for 2021 we'll talk a little bit about the the year we've just been having in terms of gameplay at least as we go through this video but yeah i've moved a few ships out here i'm going to establish myself and record my adventures for now we've got a nice big 0 0.3 low sec with lots and lots of asteroid belts for us to go and uh, exploit to the full and although we may not be getting the same high value sort of big rats as we do in the 0 0.2s and the 0 0.1s so many asteroid belts here there's going to be clone soldiers there's going to be shadow serpentis there's going to be battleships and from time to time there's going to be more do which hopefully we shall be able to deal with we'll have a look at the ships in more detail in the future videos i've got the ham caracal here i've also got the rapid light caracal in here i've got a drake i've got a heron i've got a cormorant of course <laughs> a corax and a gila and also one of the Amigas has been lurking around here as well. Uh, A, because obviously there's going to be stuff that an Alpha can't quite deal with, like big Mordus or fights I want to get into. Now, there's a gateway system to this particular pocket, as there always is. And in terms of getting the ships in through there, I did that a little bit cautiously, as I recommend you always do. If you really want to be careful, come through that first gate in a pod, just to see if it's camped. If it's not camped, then bring, go back out, bring in one of your ships and fly it through. I actually came in, brought the Heron in first, docked that up in the first station in the first system, went back out, got the Drake, put that through a couple of systems and uh, went back, got the ships in one by one like that while it was quiet. And if there were two or three people in local, certainly from the same corp or as it is here, there's an alliance that's kind of the locals. Yeah, if you don't feel comfortable, then just stop bringing the ships in through that entrance gate and maybe uh, move the ones that you've already brought in a bit deeper onto your final destination. But just play it by ear. Just remember, if it's too dodgy looking to do something now, just do it later. <laughs> don't rush. Never come through a gate blind in your biggest blingest ship. Just please, please don't. Just check the gate out. Scout it out in a frigate. Whatever. I know how soul-destroying it is when you built yourself a nice big ship. And you fly into a, a system thinking I'm going to make myself a fortune and you're dead before you've done anything. So out here on the belts, we're just mooching around seeing what we can find. We've got a Commodore here, a nice fat battleship. We'll take him down. In fact, one of the reasons it's quite nice to belt wrap with the ham caracal rather than the rapid light caracal is that when it comes to battleships, you hit your reload just before the battleship dies. <laughs> In my experience anyway. Uh, it just takes more time. It's not a question of you losing or, you know, not getting the kill and not getting the rat. It's just the amount of time you're hanging around on a belt. So that's why I like the ham caracal. We'll also see, of course, we're going to keep flying here until we find ourselves one of the clone transporters in the 0 0.2. That seems to become our little acid test. Of course, this is going to have no problems, but we shall see. It's a slightly different experience to doing it in a destroyer. The footage now is all at two times speed, by the way. I'm sure you all spotted that. I'm being a little bit selective on what loot I pick up. A cruiser doesn't have a substantial cargo hold. In fact, I can rat just over half this system before I need to go and empty. So I'm being a little bit selective. I'm looking, obviously, for the high-value stuff or stuff that I can use in fits. And uh, then if there's anything else that I feel like grabbing, I do, uh, if I need to, I'll jettison some junk that i don't think i'm going to be needing just to make a bit more room if i've picked up stuff that i don't like the look of if there's higher value stuff on grid i will certainly not think twice about doing that you can always go back and get it if you really want to if you want to really be mean leave it in a jetson container and destroy it <laughs> anyway i hope one thing you really do take away from all my low sec videos is how to get in and get used to the place and stay safe before you're risking your high value ships which is why I've taken a while before I started doing videos, you know, with cruising around with cruisers and drakes, because they're a little bit slower, they're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit more interesting because they're a higher value target to people who might want to kill them. So I'm going to tell you a story, actually. This is a true story that I saw happen this year. Uh, there was a guy in Metzrell who I saw out mining and mining and mining. He had orcas, he had a couple of vaults, he'd have his tech two uh, barges out there. Mining day in, day out. 
didn't really speak much in local he'd say hi occasionally i just i don't think he was a, a native english speaker which is obviously not a problem anyway suddenly i didn't see this guy for a week and i hadn't been flying around sailing much i'd been uh, up around here actually and uh I checked the kill boards and I saw on the kill board that this guy had flown into Salin in, I think it was about an 800 million isk rattlesnake and he got killed on the second asteroid belt on the drop down list and uh, I've no idea why he was even there and I have not seen the guy log in since and I hope it, you know, that wasn't just such a crushing loss for him all those months and weeks of mining all blown up on an asteroid belt where you just shouldn't really be in a rattlesnake what is there on a you know maybe a, a mordu but i wouldn't use a rattlesnake myself on a mordu anyway but that's besides the point he'd basically made all that money bought himself a huge big bling ship for i'll go to low sec i'm big and tough and they just bought out five ships and killed him he was in there for probably about 15 minutes and I haven't seen him log in since. So please, please, please do not be that guy. Bigger is not always better in this game. At the end of the day it may be, but you need to know how to protect the big fat ship that you're going to fly. And really that is the message I will really always try to drum into all of you and myself from time to time. Anyway, we cleared through the belt once, uh, we went to bed, we got up in the morning and we're doing it again. And we got a couple of the clone soldier recruiters have turned up on this run through, which is handy. Extra bit of bounty and a couple of their tags. We've also got a few already in the collection of the clutch restrained warp disruptors, which are the pink modules, which are worth over 3 million each. And they can drop from any ship, so you could come ratting through the 0.3 as I've shown you before in a frigate or a very cheap low skill destroyer and be taking down the frigates and the destroyers that could be dropping those kind of modules so it's always worth a little mess around in here i've already taken the precaution of setting myself up a couple of safe spots in this system in case i need to get off grid and just see what's going on it's very low traffic through the system at the moment while i'm here uh, you've got the option if you really just want to play it safe anyone else comes into local go back to the station go to your safe just wait at least until you see what they're in on D scan um, if you can't see what they're in on the D scan and they're not docked uh, maybe they're cloaked so be a little bit more cautious go and have a cup of tea maybe come back who knows it's entirely up to you how brave you want to be how comfortable you are feeling at any given time is going to be down to you so play it as cautiously as you want to play it the best way to escalate the spawns, which is kind of what's happened here. Last night I didn't get any clone soldiers on these belts. Today I am, this morning I am. Is to clear out every belt. Go from end to end of that list and kill every rat that you find. If you want to go specifically for battleships, then I suggest you kill the battleships but leave their escort ships there. On those belts it's highly likely the game will respawn in another battleship to go with the escorts that's certainly my experience anyway and again i've got that much loot i've had to come in and empty out i'll have a look at the end of the video of every you know all the loot and all of the bounties we've got during the making of the video be easier way of looking at that i think i've had a quite a quiet year to be honest on in terms of even a lot of the time i've had to play Eve this year has been to make the videos uh, because i enjoy making the videos the Amigas have had a little bit of a backseat, but that's okay. We're going to have a very busy year in 2021, I can promise you. We'll have a very quick look at the fit later on, as well as the uh, caracal that we're using. It's about 25 mils worth, so uh, you know my philosophy. If we can just keep quietly out of the way and get the enough loot to have paid for this ship, and the, uh, the bounty on that battleship is looking nice and juicy, so uh, that'll help. Look at him, big fat one. Once the ship is paid for, then we'll get braver. We'll maybe go looking for fights. You will notice it's got a uh, disruptor fitted. That's got about a 20 kilometer range on that. The hams have got about a 20 kilometer range on them. Most people see a caracal and assume it's rapid light missile fit. So mixing it up a little bit now and again can catch people out as well if they're coming to get you or indeed you want to go and get them. Now something you mustn't um, make the mistake of thinking is that because these hams, they, are, they do take down the frigates and destroyers pretty well um, with the rats. There's certainly no problem doing that. Don't make that give you the impression that if you get a, a decent frigate land on grid with you, you're going to be able to deal with that with hams. 
certainly with this fit and with Alpha Skills, <laughs> it's uh, going to be quite a challenge. You've only got those two drones and the hams will not apply to a fast, well-flown frigate that's coming to kill you half as well as they do to these little rat frigates that bimble around waiting to die. Anyway, we finally found a clone soldier and as you can see, killing him is not really the issue. We don't have to worry about that mad running. We've got a 20 kilometer range. We are, however, bigger and slower than a cormorant. So we do take a reasonable amount of damage. Now, burning the micro warp drive is how you're going to mitigate that. You just speed yourself up, make yourself a little bit harder to hit. You can get in and orbit a little bit closer. I can't pull range, obviously, too far with the hams. I've got to stay within 20 kilometers, so I might as well get in nice and close. But if you keep a track of the damage numbers coming in, those red numbers in the middle of the screen, if I burn the micro warp drive, they basically half. You can overheat your resistance module, like I'm doing there. They overheat very slowly. Do keep an eye on it, don't neglect it, but compared to overheating your weapons or your repper, your resistance module is one you can keep overheated for quite a good long time. So you can just pulse your micro warp drive keep your speed up manage your capacitor you'll take a bit less damage than i have here in this case i'm just going to go off to a safe let me shield recharge etc i've continued plodding around i found a shadow serpentis now these guys they're no harder to kill than anyone else their bounties can be much better and in fact the guy that i'm after now we'll have a look at his bounty in a minute but it's the loot we're after it could be something like you know 400 million 500 million it could be junk <laughs> It's one of the little, um, a loot box of low sec almost. You never know quite what you're going to get. Prioritise the Shadow Serpentis ship. Don't worry about the others that are on grid with him. You don't want to fight your way through this crowd when you could have hundreds of millions. In this instance, it's nothing to write home about whatsoever. I'm going to leave a couple of bits in there. Somebody else, their heart might miss a beat when they see a Shadow Serpentis wreck on the belt with some loot left in it. And two belts later, I found another one. And again, this is part of the spawns escalating through ratting the system out. So the night before, I came through these same belts. There were no clone soldiers, no shadow serpentis, no more do. I killed a lot of the stuff that was on the belts. And the next day or the next night or a few hours later, or 20 minutes is the minimum you need to wait for the belts to really to tick and respawn. But... um you'll get the escalations. It's not instantaneous. Don't think you're going to walk through one set of belts, kill everything, and then the next wave is going to be much, much better. It could be, but don't expect it to be. And again, no spectacular loot from that Shadow Serpentis, and we'll leave a little bit in there just to annoy somebody else or frustrate somebody else. It's all part of the competition. Mind games work as well as missiles sometimes. <laughs> And the more you spend lurking around, you get to know the locals, you get to know their habits, you get to know who to avoid, who's likely to call in help, etc, etc, etc. So here we are, we're back in the hangar with the beautiful Caracal. We'll have a quick look at the fit. It's about 30 millions worth, although if we actually have a look, we've got about 3 millions worth of ammo. So just about 28, 27 millions worth of Caracal here. Up the top we've got meta heavy missile launchers, we've got navy ammo in case we need that, but we've done all of this video with just a regular Scourge heavy assault missiles. That gives us just under 300 DPS. If we overheat, we can get nearly 350 out of it, which isn't too bad at all. In the mid slots, we've got a pair of the Shield Extender 2s. We've got one Tech 2 Multi Spectrum Shield Hardener. We've got a Micro Warp Drive. We've got the compact one on there we need because of the power grid restrictions. We've got a Scoped Warp Disruptor. So that's got a 22 kilometer range. The missiles have got a 21 kilometer range. That matches up quite nicely. Obviously, we can overheat the Disruptor, get a little bit more range out of it if we need to. Down the bottom, we've got a trio of Ballistic Control System 2s to up the DPS. And we've got a Compact Reactor Control Unit, which we need to boost the power grid on the hull to fit in the hams. I could train Tech 2 Heavy Assault Missiles as an Alpha. Uh, it's a long train. It's about 33 days on an Alpha Skill Queue, if you could squeeze that into your plan. Uh, I find just using the meta to be fine, certainly for these purposes anyway. Over here in the rigs, we've got one... Defense field extender to up the hit points. We've got we've closed the EM hole with the EM shield reinforcer, and we've got one warhead calefraction catalyst, 
which of course is the rig that will increase the missile damage straight up just give it a little bit more pew we could go for more tank we don't seem to need it so do bear that in mind you could take that off and put another extender on if you wanted a little bit more comfort i've just gone for a little bit more dps with the rigging in this instance in the drone bay we've got a couple of hornets they're applying the right kind of damage for the serpentis rats if i was going out looking for a fight i might switch those to acolytes if we have a look in the item hanger this is just the loot from the ratting we have done in the videos right here it's 52 millions worth according to the valuation down there that's the loot we've got that's not bad going we've got five of the good old pinkies we've got our clone soldier tag the value of those just seems to fluctuate quite a bit it's down to about 12 million at the moment i've sold those for about 16 17 not that long ago keep an eye on the price if you don't need to sell them now it might be something worth hanging on to in terms of bounties if we have a quick look in your wallet the bounties we have made are basically in this video this whole selection here i've added it up from here to here about 20 odd million so in the making of this video we've made enough money for about three more caracals so we'll be back very soon being much braver in one anyway guys i hope you've enjoyed the video i hope you have had a, a bearable 2020 and that 2021 is it much better for you for us for everybody else leave us a like if you've liked it please subscribe it really helps the channel share the videos if you think you've got a mate who might be interested in them comments questions and suggestions are always welcome either down below or join us over in the discord and say hi do click that notification bell to make sure you know when the new videos come out but for now take care of yourselves take care of each other remember even is believing fly brave and goodbye